Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to record my April wrap-up. Finally, I've learned my lesson to not let it wait to get to the end of the month before I wrap up because there's way too many books for me to talk about for this video. So I'm gonna try to limit myself to talking like one minute per book. A quick rundown of the 20 things that I need to talk about. So on my April TBR, I had Say Nothing, but I actually ended up finishing it right before April. Technically didn't read it in April, but haven't talked about it here. This is a super anticipated book for me, one that I've tried to get into a few times, honestly, and I just think that it's not for me. It's a little bit more of a bloated history book than I wanted it to be, not as much of, of a immersive narrative nonfiction that I thought that I was gonna get into. I know that many people like love this book and it's an automatic five stars for them but for me it was really just a three star book. I loved learning about the Price sisters in this book. I think they were the most interesting aspect. There were a lot of other male players in the troubles that I could not keep straight in my head while I was listening to the audiobook and they just weren't as fascinating to me as the Price sisters and their involvement. I also want to say that the main point of this book is supposed to look into the disappearance of this one woman so it's kind of of like a true crime account of it. I'd say 15% of book accounts for that. This is mostly just the history of the troubles and the people who were involved during the later part of the 20th century. The next book that I finished was one that I gave five stars, the first adult fiction book that I've given five stars to in a long time, I want to say, and that was Severance by Ling Ma. I love this book and I thought that it was so smart and I'm so glad that I finally read it. I kept seeing it pop up in my subscription. Everybody was kind of recommending it and then with COVID-19, and this pandemic going on it fit very well don't know if i recommend if you're not into that kind of stuff like reading something that's so in your face relevant but for me it was really good i loved it because of the way that it depicted millennials and like office culture the lack of ambition and drive that sometimes millennials have and our place in this system basically. I also really loved like all of the immigration aspects of this book and seeing the main characters kind of tracing her back her family coming to the United States and just the character work here is what I mostly loved about it. It's a very well done character focused story. I also really liked whenever we were going back to like the apocalypse. I found those sections very engrossing but also kind of like there's a mystery and a suspense to them as well as the main character is going against these men who are making all of these rules and it's her kind of taking her power back so there were just so many like little things that like tick the boxes for me of what I look for in an adult fiction book. Severance just really delivered for me and it's I would like to reread this book before the year is over. That is how much I liked it. After Severance I read Writers and Lovers which is another really anticipated book for me. This is a book by Lily King. I read her previous work Euphoria and thought that it was just okay but Writers and Lovers I loved so much more. I really really enjoyed it. This was delightful to me because again of the character focus that the story goes with. The main character is a woman who's wanting to get into publishing and wanting to write her own book. Everybody is moving on with their lives but this person is still like so focused on their craft. A lot of people will read this book and will not find it interesting to see all of like the minutia and the small things that the main character is going through here but that is what I personally love the most about this book. It's the descriptions and the focus on the character development through really boring <laughs> tasks that she does like going to work as a waitress, babysitting, going to the doctor's office and doing like her checkup. It wasn't supposed to be riveting stuff but to me that's what made the book riveting. It just was very intimate and a very real depiction of this woman who's tr still trying to make her dream come true. So that's two for two really good adult fiction books that I really enjoyed and it made me really happy at the beginning of April. After that I read quite a few duds. This is where my reading kind of went down. I stopped reading as much just because everything that I was reading I was like this is just two stars. I literally had like four or five books straight that I gave two or two and a half stars so that was kind of disappointing. The first one I gave two and a half stars was to Most Likely by Sarah Watson. This is a book that focuses on four friends as you can see from the cover who are in their final year of high school and the whole point of the book is that one of them is going to be a future president. 
happens many years from now. Throughout the whole book, you're basically asked to guess who that is based on their extracurricular activities and what they're doing in school. So this book is kind of working off of a gimmick, but that gimmick is basically the thing that I like the most about it, is the fact that I did want to keep reading because I did want to keep guessing because every chapter you get more information and you can start kind of deciphering who's gonna end up becoming the president. What I didn't really love this book is the friendship dynamic. I really didn't feel like they actually actually were friends. I didn't believe their friendship. This wants to compare itself to the sister of the traveling pants and I'm here to tell you that it did not work that way for me. I didn't really believe in their like two off friendships with each other, their three off friendship with each other, and then their like group friendship with each other either. After that I read a book that I gave two stars. I was really excited for this book so this is kind of a disappointment but it's The Plain Janes. This is a, um, a re-up of two volumes that came out I want to say like 2007 or 2008 and then they came out with a new one which is the third part in this graphic novel and it's a huge bind up it's almost 500 pages of a graphic novel so it's thick i really just had a hard time connecting with these characters i did not care about them the first part i thought was really compelling you're introduced to this character who is moving to suburbia because she's faced this like traumatic event and living in the city and so it's her trying to become friends with this group of girls and it's about the power of basically art and how art can save your life and it leaned into that the entire time. So these issues and themes, especially that art saves lives, they were explored over and over and over again. It made it to me really repetitive and dull. By the third part I was mostly skimming just to finish this ginormous thing and to see what ended up happening. I would actually pass for this. Here's what it looks like on the inside. It changes the color based on what part you are in. It's just not my jam, sadly. After that, I read a book that I gave one and a half stars and that was The Blackbird Girls by Anne Blankman. I feel kind of bad because this author started following me on my Instagram. P.S. I started a bookstagram if you want to follow it. It's Split Reads, so find me on there. It's the name of my channel, so it'll be easy to find. So the author started following me on there. I'm like, please stop following me. I do feel like people will like this book. It depends on who you are as a reader. I did not really like this book and I think it had to do with the plot and the storyline that we were following. It's these two girls who are forced to leave their town because of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. But really it's a story about these two girls who are of very different religious backgrounds and they are kind of antagonists and become friends. And I didn't appreciate how much it felt like it was moralizing and teaching me a lesson. There's also a whole section in this book that deals with child abuse. I didn't really love how that was portrayed either. I didn't think that it came across as genuine as the author wanted it to come across. didn't really love the plot. I didn't love the characters. I didn't love the way that it was written. I thought that it was going to focus a lot more on that nuclear disaster and survival as a result of that. I next read Green Glass House, which was also kind of a disappointment. I ended up giving it two and a half stars. I would only really recommend this to people who love books that focus on settings and on creating an ambiance and a vibe that is really what this book did most successfully to me. There are a lot of characters in this book and I found it difficult to keep track of who was who and like who was involved with what part of the mystery. It's about a kid who is adopted and is living in Greenglass House which is a place where smugglers pass by and a lot of them sometimes stay in their family's hotel. It's them staying in Greenglass House and like other things start happening. There's a mystery. Why are all these people coming here? You start realizing that they're all after something. Something. This is a book that has mysteries upon mysteries upon mysteries. So once you think you solve something, then there's like something put on top of that layer, or like another mystery you have to think about. And when I was reading this was April 10th through April 12th, which I would say was one of the most like information heavy weeks that we've had during this pandemic where I didn't really have the mind power to keep that all straight. Don't really care about the fantasy angle of this book either. I'm not much of a fantasy reader. This was a very light fantasy angle. I wanted just a more straightforward mystery at the time and that's not really what I got. But I did enjoy the family dynamic in this book and I thought that the main character was well developed and was someone that 
you could cheer for and you were rooting for. After that, I listened to a really compulsive audiobook and I got this one through Libro FM. It's called My Daddy is a Hero and this is a summary and a like psychological analysis about sociopaths from the perspective of a woman who is a psychotherapist and couples counselor. This is following the Chris Watts case that happened north of Denver maybe two years ago. So it's a story that I'm well aware of because it happened 40 minutes from where I live. So most of it is a rehashing of everything that we know about the case including like right before and right after which really played out on TV news like the guy was even on the news asking for his wife to come home when he had murdered her and his kids. It's looking into how the police got him to confess and the last third of the book is kind of describing the mental state you have to be in to commit something like this from the perspective of the author. She has a lot of disclaimers where she's basically saying like I've never met this person, I've never diagnosed him, but she does look into personality disorders that she think might be at play here. I think the most interesting aspect of this book was one that wasn't explored. So in this case the couple was involved in this multi-level marketing and like social media basically about face of how their lives were actually deep down. They were very happy on social media and I feel like the author really missed out on exploring all of those topics. I feel like those things are so much more interesting about this case. The author really humanizes the victims which I really appreciated. Definitely not a perfect true crime book but one that I liked listening to because of how much I know about this case and how much I want to know more about this case. After that I read a really cute and funny comics collection and that is the new release that's coming out from Debbie Tung. It is Happily Ever After and Everything in Between. I've read two books by her, Book Love and Quiet Girl in the Noisy World, so I'm really excited that this one is a new one coming out by her. It looks at her and her husband's life being married now and I just really enjoy these comics because of how real they feel. They're very cute. They they just feel like a warm hug to me. If you want some cute comics, kind of like soppy, I do recommend this one. It was very cute. After that, I finished another book through Libra Femme and that was King and the Dragonflies by Kaysen Calendar. This is a book that's very heartfelt and it focuses on how your family reacts to your sexuality. What I really valued about this book is the way that the author brought that emotion across. There's some very tender moments in this book and I really appreciated that. There's also some moments where the kids are just being kids and I also really appreciated that balance. The novel kind of had a dreamlike aspect to it, especially because of the fact that the main character is going through the grief of losing his brother. Just really enjoyed how flawed all of the characters were in the book. They were very considerate and, and caring of each other, even though they were all kind of dealing with their own grief and also dealing with their own changing family dynamics. And I ended up giving it three and a half stars. After that, I read Stepping Stones by Lucy Nicely, which is coming out I believe today when I'm filming this and this is a graphic novel so it is a fictional account but based on Lucy Nicely's life growing up on a farm with her mom and her mom's boyfriend and basically getting new stepsisters out of this so the main character is not named Lucy her name is Jen but a lot of the same things that we saw in Relish by Lucy Nicely I feel like came across here just from her being a child instead of like being an adult and thinking back to when she was a child. I ended up giving this book three stars. I thought that the ending was a little bit frustrating because there is this very big tension between Jen and her mother's boyfriend that isn't resolved at all and that really really made me angry. Just the way that the stepfather figure talks to and belittles Jen I felt like was never really discussed with the sisters and with her mom. I feel like that probably isn't going to be changed for the final version because this is an arc but that really made me not like this book as much as I wanted to like it. So not a new favorite middle grade graphic novel um, but one that I would recommend to kids if they like Raina Telgemeier like books. And of course I love Lucy Nicely's illustrations and I will keep reading her work. After that I read We Dream of Space by Erin and Trotta Kelly. I really enjoyed this book. It was a really sweet tale of three siblings who are living in the 1980s right before the Challenger shuttle disaster. It's kind of the lead up to that. Of course there's kind of like this 
you know that there's going to be some sadness coming but mostly it's a story about three very different siblings and how they see their own lives and um how each of them is going through like a, a different thing bird the only girl wants to be a shuttle commander and she's really into science she's kind of quiet she has a lot of pent-up anger and anxiety and sadness because of her family situation there's also her brother fitch who is her twin he's going through some issues of having girls express interest in him and then having his his friends laughing at him because of that. Cash, who is the oldest brother, but he flunked a grade, so he's in the same grade as the twins, trying to keep up with his friends who are in a grade higher than him, but you know, kind of being stuck. He's gonna be stuck in middle school as they go on to high school. One of the things that I love the most about this book is how tweens were depicted because I felt like it was done really, really well. They all came across with this attitude of, no, I don't really care what people are saying, but actually please tell me what people are saying about me. I vividly remember being like that as a tween of acting like I didn't care when I really did care. It's also kids wanting to be good at something and trying to figure out what their interests are and where their like strengths lie. I gave it four stars. After that I reread The One and Only Ivan by Katherine Applegate in anticipation of the release of The One and Only Bob which is coming out early May. Last time I read the book I, I read it with my eyes and um, this time I listened to it and I didn't find that I liked that experience as much as I like reading it. I really have forgotten like everything about the characters and the, and the storyline so I'm glad that I reread it but if you've never read it I would suggest reading the physical copy. It's in verse. I felt like it didn't come across as poetic when I was listening to it. After that I finished Hidden Valley Road by Robert Coker. This is a new release that's been really anticipated. This is equal parts a family history of many many kids. They had like 12 kids and how half of them are dealing with schizophrenia. The other part of the book is looking into schizophrenia, the disease. The accounts here are very harrowing so I would definitely tell you that it's sad to read this. It's very unfortunate the situation that these kids were put in and also the time frame when this happened to them there was not much help and there was not much understanding of what schizophrenia is and is not because so many kids were facing this disease in this family scientists were really able to learn more about the disease by studying them i think the two most important family members to follow here that i found the most interesting were the two and only girls they had 10 boys and then at the end of the line they had two girls and it's about those two girls very different upbringing and also a very different way that they deal deal with the trauma of everything that their family has gone through in the last like five decades. One is very hands-on and one is very hands-off. I really found this book fascinating um, and I do recommend it. I gave it four stars. The next book I read after that was Boys and Sex by Peggy Ornstein. This is her follow-up to Girls and Sex which she released maybe four years ago. Boys and Sex, like Girls and Sex, looks into the way that boys, teens, and young adult boys like going into college look at sex and hookup culture, porn, masculinity, masculinity and gender. She kind of quizzes more than 100 boys on these topics. This book is very little on the science and very little on the research of how boys express and act out gender and how they think about sex and their sexuality. It's a little bit more instead about the lived experience of gender and sexuality for the boys that she interviewed. So I think that's her biggest strength and weakness. It's her biggest strength because this book is a breeze. The readability is really high because it's just stories of boys and how they think of themselves and their world but it's a disadvantage also because you're not learning about the science studies and facts and things like that could elevate this book just like it could have elevated girls and sex but i did enjoy boys and sex more than girls and sex because this book was more successful in getting a diversity of voices involved and she really talks about that at the beginning because that was one of the biggest things that was a pushback to her previous book so i really valued that in this book she really tried to get different voices in the mix and when it comes to race she had a lot of trans boys that she interviewed in this one as well and i gave it three and a half stars after that i finished cattail this is by craig pittman he's a journalist but he's also written like six or more books a lot of his books are focused on florida that is where he's from I read him because he writes about Florida. And this is his new book. It just came out at the beginning of the year and it looks into the Florida Panther. Basically how the Florida Panther was almost 
done, almost extinct, how these core group of scientists in the 70s and 80s got together to kind of bring them back, the work that that took to bring them back, but also all of the pushback that they got from politicians and developers, oh those real estate developers, who were trying to make the Florida swamp into the Florida suburban grid line. I didn't really know this history coming from Florida. I know it's our state animal, but I didn't really know any of that background of what it was like in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. I did, of course, know how politicians are in Florida and how developers are in Florida, so that part was not a shock to me at all, but it was fascinating to see all of these names keep springing up that I know and I've walked down things named after them who are very much involved in trying to kill all of these measures to try to save the Florida Panther. Yeah, that's great. I really enjoyed this book because of Craig Pittman's voice. He, his narrative voice is very funny. He tries to come across as like a layman. So that's the thing that I love the most about his writing style. I didn't love the audiobook narration of this and it's also the same audiobook narrator for Green Glass House, which I talked about earlier. And I also think that that book tried to be funny, but it did not come across as funny as the author of the book wanted it to come across in both Cattail and Green Glass House. So really a narrator of an audiobook can change your experience of a book. I would recommend this book. I ended up giving it three and a half stars. After that, I read a really, really good book. It is Genesis Begins Again. This was on my middle grade March TBR. I didn't get to it until now. This is by Alicia D. Williams, who I learned is a teacher. This is a book about Genesis, who is our main character. And she is dealing with evictions that continue to happen to her, her mom and her dad, her dad. He's a very absent father when it comes to making money and keeping the family afloat. He's very present when it comes to the emotional life of being there as a father, but he just can't really seem to hold down a job. The book really focuses on her being evicted from this one house and ending up in this really nice neighborhood where she starts going to the school that does not really have very many African Americans at the school. It's about her developing friendship with two people there, and it's about Genesis trying to accept and having a, a very hard time accepting her her color. She is a very dark African-American girl. It gets to the point where like even her grandma makes comments and that is really like hard to read, but it's real. And that's what I liked about this book. It came across very believable. Genesis trying to make herself lighter in, in ways that are troubling and, and bad for her body and her skin. And there's also a whole plot line where she is joining a talent show and she's got a really beautiful voice and has this teacher who is very encouraging and and caring of Genesis, unlocking that talent and that confidence in her that in turn changes the way she starts seeing herself. I think this is a sad book, but I think that it comes across in a way where it's it's a very everyday child story of going to school and having friends with these conversations about colorism on, on the side. The characters are very three-dimensional, they're all flawed, but I still understood where they were coming from, and especially Genesis. I think she's the most important thing for the story, and and her voice came across perfectly in the audiobook as well and that's narrated by the author too. I definitely would recommend this one. I ended up giving it four stars. Three books left. After that I listened to On the Horizon by Lois Lowry. This is a book in verse about World War II memories that Lois Lowry had that she then fictionalizes with other things she's learned makes it poetic in that way. This came about because she saw a home movie of her. She grew up in Hawaii. Behind her she saw the USS Arizona which is a ship that that got bombed during Pearl Harbor. So it's kind of like these people were having a normal life behind her and they didn't even know what was coming. It has perspectives that are both Japanese and also perspectives that are American. This is a very short audiobook, so I can imagine that the, the text is like tiny. If you like books in verse, I would recommend. I think I had the same reaction to this as I had to the one and only Ivan. I think maybe I just shouldn't read books in verse on audiobook. They don't come off as poetic and you can't read them as like softly and like take pauses as you would while listening if you were reading it. So I think reading it might be a better way to consume this book. I gave this one three stars. After that, I read The Lightning Thief. This is the first time I've ever read The Lightning Thief. It's a very beloved book at my library. Every kid is always asking for it, so we picked it for our first meeting for our virtual book club that we're doing for kids, so that's why I read it. It's not a book that I'm particularly drawn to just because, again, I don't really read fantasy middle grade. I just knew, like, the first couple chapters into this book that this, this is the case for this as well. There's a lot of monsters in this book. It's a lot about plot and moving the 
plot very quickly and keeping the pages turning and I totally get that. That is why kids love it. It's very exciting and thrilling and you want to keep going really quickly to see all these action scenes. But what this book was missing for me is the character development. I didn't really feel like I cared about any of the characters, including Percy. I don't really know that much about him, though he was obviously the most well-developed character here. But especially like all of the gods and goddesses in the background didn't come across very three-dimensional for me and that bothered me. I kind of was just reading to read so I would know what happened so that when I develop questions to ask kids at my meeting, I would know what I'm talking about. Not that it was bad, it's just not for me, you know? It's just not for me. I really did enjoy how family was portrayed here. I, I liked the mom a lot and I liked what happened to the stepdad. I think that dynamic was very good here. Give it three stars. Just a fine book for me. Then after that is my last book. Woohoo! The last book that I read in April was The List of Things That Will Not Change by Rebecca Stead. This is her new release and I listened to this one on Libra FM. I love character focused middle grade books. I love character focused stories period as you've heard and seen in this wrap up. This one I enjoyed for that same purpose. We are focusing on the main character B who is doing her best with what she can. Her family is divorcing and her dad is about to marry a new guy and so her dad has come out as gay. She is very optimistic about all of this. She's getting a new sister from this. She's getting a new dad and she really enjoys her dad's fiance and that was really lovely how it came through because it wasn't like she was pining for the past and like hating her new life. She was really accepting of it and that was really lovely to see. It's also about her dealing with her emotions and going through a therapy pissed to deal with her emotions. That depiction was so well done and that I compared to the thing about jellyfish which depicted a very unhealthy relationship with therapists and, and talking about your feelings. I know that both experiences happen but obviously I like reading one where she has a more positive experience. It didn't start positively but it developed into a positive relationship that is helping her. I also really enjoyed and found valuable that the main character is dealing with eczema. I've never read a book with a character that is dealing with eczema and I know people in my life that deal with it. That depiction was very vivid in this book. I really enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it four stars. If you enjoyed enjoy character heavy almost plotless books i do recommend it it was really lovely I, I will say though i feel like i've read quite a few books middle grade books where there's been a divorce now and the main dad is coming out as gay and is going to be with a new man and i haven't read quite as many middle grade books with a lesbian mom that is something that i'm looking at publishing and something that i'm kind of like side eyeing a little bit so if you know any books where there's a middle grade character who has as a mom that has just recently come out as gay herself and is exploring options with new partners, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, please let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.